Hello my soccer universe! It's lunch break, so time for the final review video. We are going to Western Europe, which typically is my last video because it's the one with where I have to do the most work, but also, um, you know, where games are usually played on Monday. Boy, 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 boy. I think you saw it in the head, head headline ups up there. The main head headline is that I think we have two more teams eliminated from their respective title races. I think Sevilla are now out of the running and so is probably Monaco in France. So in France, we went within two weeks from a four-way race to more or less a two-way race. And in Spain, we still have a three-way race going into the Super Weekend that's coming up. Um, it is just so exciting. I actually think that for the, most of the season, we knew that France is really, really exciting, but Spain is really he hitting up La Liga probably has the most exciting finish in decades uh, there. And they, even the one in Liga, uh, if Lille pulls that upset, that would be a major, major, major thing. And I already said I will get this little jersey, I will tell you once we get there. But um, yeah, we got a so quick, uh, yeah. Let's start in La Liga. Uh, the La Liga weekend, I mean, it really started for me with Elche playing Atletico Madrid. And I have to say, Atletico Madrid, especially first time, really, really played well. Um, and it was more or less, I think Suarez was a little bit uh, too careless because they could have scored already the first goal in the 16th minute when uh, I think it was Llorente uh, who was not offside, but then Suarez is not watching his line and he steps just a little bit offside. And so this goal da 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 doesn't count, which would have been a very well-deserved lead already at the moment. Marcos Llorente after um, Carrasco assist gets them the 1-0 and then Atleti still has the same problem as always, cannot find the second goal. And um, there was a push, the push then subsided. I think uh, Suarez scored a second one that was called offside. Again, he a little bit too careless with the offside line. And then the longer the game went on, and may I add a beautiful jersey, which I have to have to say green, uh, uh, the white with a little bit green of Elche against the uh, dark blue of Atleti. Uh, it looks darn fine. It looks darn fine. The longer it went on, the more Elche was threatening and they get a big chance late with a penalty um, that is put on the post by Fidel. Uh, however, Oblak was well off his line. And the rule makes sense. It didn't have to be retaken because the penalty did not go in. Uh, or did not hit the goal. And I think that that way the rule makes sense. I, also, uh, I, I would say the same thing should, should apply if someone encroaches into the area. Uh, if a defender encroaches the area and the penalty is con 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 converted, then uh, it should count. You know, use a little bit com common sense, but a big let off. And I think Oblak has now saved two, and this was the third one that was not converted against him. He's becoming a penalty monster after being even mocked by his own teammates that he is not all that great with saving penalties. So, great start for Atleti Atleti Atletico Madrid going into the Barca clash uh, next weekend. Um, I want to briefly say Uesca against Rasad. I saw a teeny bit of it. Uesca getting a very late uh, win through an Elustando um, own goal. I think for Rasas that that season is almost over. I mean, it, they will not finish top of four. They have the Europa League spots relatively safe. They won the cup. So I think the the season is a little bit fizzling out, which is also the reason why I have not yet really gone for a Real Sociedad jersey um, yet. Although I, re I really want, I want to have it. I'm actually waiting that the current one goes on sale uh, rather soon. Real Madrid against Osasuna. I think also Real didn't see that one on us. But from, from what I could get for the first half, I think it looked all right. But then the game fizzled out. You thought this is, has nil nil written all over it. And then of, the, of all people, Eda Militao uh, gets the breakthrough. And then Casemiro uh, with one of the craziest and uh, yeah <laughs> stupid finishes makes it 2-0. And Real Madrid get a win and stay in the title race. Um, another game that is not from a title race that I want to pick out, Cardiff, uh, with a big uh, win that I think saves them. Sobrino getting the goal in the 39th at Granada and they hang on to it. Granada even him a player says, it's enough Roberto Soldado for not keeping his mouth uh, shut very, very much. But then it was all. Uh, will we have a Madrid only title race or will Barcelona and Sevilla join in? Well, it did not look good for Barcelona. 
uh, for a long time. I think in the first half, yes, they had possession, but I always felt that uh, Valencia is a little bit more dangerous. And when Gabriel Paulista was completely forgotten by Langley in the box and makes it 1-0, I really thought, wow. Wow, this uh, this really doesn't look good. And uh, Barcelona was shaking considerably. But then Lato, with uh, one of the most stupid handballs that you, that you will ever see, gives a penalty to Barcelona. Messi steps up and the penalty is saved. However, in the run-up, it is Sergio Busquets who kind of saves it from going out and the ball then falls uh, towards Messi and it's 1-1. And that sparked now the 20 Barcelona mates. As I told you, Barcelona plays in uh, spurts of 20. Griezmann, just a few minutes later, had it... Um, did he head, head it in? I don't know. He, he makes it 2-1, turns the game around and then um, a free kick at the edge, edge of the box from Messi and he finally converts a free kick again beautifully, curls it over the wall, inside of the post in just great. And at that point I thought, yeah, Barcelona's gonna seed it out, maybe even make a fourth one and cruising. No, Carlos Soler had other uh, thoughts, he just takes the ball in the 83rd and puts it into the net. And then Barcelona was shaking again. If they don't kill the game in the 20 minutes that they have every game where they can play great, they're in trouble. But this time they hang on and stay in the title race. And um, I was in so far happy that the game uh, next Saturday will actually mean something. I also really wanted that um, Sevilla stays in the title race, that they have really something to play for against Real Madrid. And yeah, typical Sevilla. Whenever you think they have something going, but... I have been saying it all along, I don't trust Sevilla and that's exactly why. They had Bilbao in the back, but I saw exactly that Bilbao will do something. Athletic Club uh, just waited for that one chance and it came in the 9th minute. A really nice count, 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 count track where you already see when they're running it's two against, against one and Iñaki Williams converts it every day, any day. And it's 1-0 Bilbao and Sevilla, who had the big fans already cheering them out. I mean, it is always, when Sevilla has no pressure, they play great and they can have, they win, 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 win. But as soon as it gets a little bit hotter and they could achieve something, they all fall away. And this is, that's why I call, I still call Sevilla the most frustrating team in Europe, despite them winning the Europa League last season. So what all of that means is it is still only six points. But Sevilla is out of it. With 1%, one, one I think the title is between Atleti, Real Madrid and Barcelona. And this is so finely balanced. The only one that controls their destiny is Atletico Madrid. Although they're here only second in their chances, uh, they, they are still on average, as we'll see, they will finish first. But they're the only team that controls their destiny. They, if they win out, they are champions. Now, you would think if Barcelona wins against Atletico Madrid, that they are in, the, in, in control. No, they're not. Then Real Madrid is in control. So if Barcelona beats Atletico Madrid, they need Real Madrid to falter. Real Madrid needs to uh, Atleti at least to fall away because they only had to head over Barcelona. So I, it is so, although Barcelona are the teeniest of favorites in here, it is so finely balanced. And I heard today the Terminator um, an analogy, and I, th I think you can agree with that. If you don't make absolutely sure that Real Madrid is dead and buried, they creep on back. And even though, and it actually fits with the squad, the squad is on the last line. They are resurrecting players left and right to play for them. It is not totally un in inconceivable that they go on to a Champions League final, potentially win it and win this league. Although it is all Barcelona, probably is a little bit more talented. Atletico Madrid enjoys a little bit of an advantage. But Real Madrid is the team that has won the head to head against both teams. So only 18%, eight, 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 but that could become very, very big very soon. Uh, on, on the bottom, I didn't remember. So we saw Cadiz is uh, safe with 40 points. They were probably safe even before that. Uh, Alaves. Uh, Alaves, Real Valladolid, those are teams in trouble. Oesca, that win over Real Sociedad really gave them a boost, whereas LJ is now down and out. And yeah, um, we have to see how it really pans pan out at the moment. Uh, Real Valladolid, I think they not only have the lowest rating, they probably might have a really tough schedule coming up as well. Um, so expected standing sees Real Valladolid going, going down, Oesca go, uh, being saved, Elche 
gone but it's very 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 tight so here there's a really tight line and for the title you see it Atleti and Barcelona you cannot uh, really separate them however Atleti has the slightest average points advantage and that's what I base my stuff on here although Barcelona is teensy bit more likely to win the title simulations this is just there is a simulation error in there it's basically they're dead even they're dead even and as I said, we have Super Sunday come, 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 oh, so the Super Weekend coming up. Mark your calendar, Saturday, 4.15 Central European Time, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid. Uh, that will go. That's basically the one game you have to watch there. Um, sleeper game that could be fun is Villarreal against Celsius. So the weekend, of course, Real Madrid, Sevilla is the other really, really big game, but a lot will uh, hinge on that, how Barcelona Atleti play. And also, I think, how Real Madrid does in the Champions League, whether Sevilla has a chance to, uh, you know, finish ahead of Real Madrid or any of the other two. So, yeah, um, for me, per person, I want Sevilla to, to win this one, but it will make my choice of games easier because at the same time, you and Milan are playing, so I will put my em 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 emphasis there because the Real Madrid-Sevilla game is probably not as essential anymore as it was just before yesterday let's go to France I, there's a little bit less I, I, I can talk except that Lance um, missed the first chance to mess up the championship uh, they are the team that uh, play against everyone that is up there PSG control the game was not great but control the game get the uh, goal through Neymar get the second one through Marquinhos you think they're cruising but the right of the kickoff uh, Gnago makes it 2-1 uh, and then PSG was a little bit shaky but they hang on they get the dirty win over loss and that is all that they needed um, in, uh, in, in, in the evening Burak Yilmaz uh, again puts Lil on his shoulder scores the fir first goal is very instrumental uh, in going forward Selig the other Turk uh, makes it 2-0 uh, in the 56th and uh, Lil getting another vital win they have not been doing very well at home so far but Lille and PSG basically staying in the title race with Lille having a slight advantage so all eyes and we had some remarkable results Bordeaux kind of gets a big win over Rennes 1-0 uh, not a big win 4-1 over Brest probably not enough because Lorient beats Angers, Angers. Uh, so uh, you know uh, down there there's also quite some stuff happening but Monaco Lyon what a game that was and I actually yes I watched the Barcelona Valencia game that was at the same time uh, but I was really really heartbroken that I did not watch this one because this was probably even although the same amount of goals even a tad better. I remember in the cup semi-final when Lyon completely dominated Monaco and Monaco just makes a first for, for goal and sends it away. Um, this time Monaco takes it in Monaco a little bit. Uh, nah, I, I don't want to say better because uh, Lyon very well in, in the game and Depay with a uh, effort all by himself basically makes it 1-1 in the 57th. And then they have Kakare sent off and you think everything tilts towards Monaco. No. In with a man less, Marcelo make, uh, make, make, makes it 2-1. Ben Yedda can equalize in the 86th with a penalty. And Monaco moves forward. And uh, De Giglio assists uh, Ryan Cherki in the 89th with the winner for Lyon. Which is an important win for Lyon because they, they still want to get into the Champions League. And it probably, no, as we will see uh, just in a sec, it will probably knock Monaco out of, out of contention. At the end. The two teams don't like each other and there were huge flare-ups uh, with De Giglio and Pellegrini, uh, two Italians, getting at each other. Uh, meaning it's uh, this uh, Giglio got also a red card who, and will, will be missing and Marcelo also for fighting uh, uh, Pellegrini and uh, Goebbels. So Monaco basically got it to more important players for Lyon into a fight and into a red card that will be suspended. So in the end, maybe uh, Monaco get, at least for the Champions League qualification spot, the upper hand. We need to look at the standings uh, to digest everything. Uh, staying up top, Lille still having the advantage um, over PSG, but it's only a single point. But um, Monaco and Lyon are now rather behind 
And so I don't think that those two will go uh, and have a chance at the championship, but they might go into the Champions League qualification spots with Monaco again holding a slight advantage there. On the bottom, I think Bordeaux with that win uh, rid themselves at least momentarily um, of any troubles for rele re relegation. It's now Lorient, La Nantes and Nîmes. With Lorient actually looking the best of these, um, Nîmes having the hardest task getting out, although they are not, might look into uh, stare at relegation. Uh, Strasbourg hangs in there with Lorient, but it's overall a better team, so it really seems that Nantes is in danger of going down, which, as I said, is a huge, huge deal. Um, Expect standing says as much, not and Nim go go down and on top, Lille just ahead of PSG, but the similar as in Spain, you, it's very, very tough to uh, separate these two. Monaco Lyon also very, very finely balanced with Monaco holding the slightest of advantages. Um, and on, on the bottom, as I said, uh, not going in the rele relegation. I don't necessarily like that. Next round on Friday is actually the big one. Lance against Lille, huge Northern Derby. Um, and one where Lens definitely would want to uh, trip up Lille, I have, have, have had to say. I decide for myself, if Lille wins that one, I'm going to go out and buy a Lille jersey. Um, that is the, the reason, that's the point where I think Lille would fully be deserving uh, of being added to the regulation. I think I've been holding back because I know that their future is looking not so bright. But I think uh, if they beat Lens, Two more game the rounds and it looks rather doable. I think this is the do or die game for Lille. Uh, win that and I think you have a clear path to the, to, to the championship. No one talks about Saint Etienne Marseille, although those, those are two big teams. We have also a Ren PSG matchup. Uh, it's not an easy game for uh, Paris, uh, Paris. And Monaco plays a start Reims. And uh, Lyon has a home game against Lorient, so also having a little bit to do with uh, the bottom uh, part and not could pull Bordeaux potentially back into the relegation battle. Moving over to Portugal, I um, mean, everyone up there won, but Sporting, I actually saw a little bit, they had a goal early on disallowed uh, for offside. Looked for a second, not, but it was all, 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 all right. And then, yes, na Nacional, and uh, yeah, first time I think in my life that I uh, at least knowingly watched na Nacional. Again, nice church, isn't it? The green and white of uh, Sporting against the light blue of Nacional. Look nice. Um, they just keep on grinding out wins. Fedal in the 83rd and then Cabral with a penalty in the 92nd, deciding the game for Sporting, which means Sporting enjoys now a six point lead with four games to go. And most importantly, if we look now um, at the next round, Benfica and Porto play against each other next round. So they will be taking points away from each other. And I know Sporting also has to play Benfica. But it looks rather good for Sporting, especially if they can pull out the win uh, midweek against Rio Ave. So we have to see. Uh, if they can can do so, then they also have a weekend round that goes into Wednesday. You know, Port Portugal is on their own time. Time, time and they have a sporting play against Boavista. Boa traditional uh, duel between the second teams in their respective cities. However, Boavista is not doing all that well. Um, but I think by that time, sporting could already really, really, really look good um, and probably more or less wrap up the title or already if they get two wins and there's a tie between uh, Benfica and Porto. Porto, not Porto. Okay, lots to talk. I tried to keep it within 20, 20 minutes. Let me know what you thought about, uh, what you think about the title races in France and in Spain. If you think the sporting in, in one and a half weeks from now are already champions, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.